بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقدة من لساني يفقهوا قولي Thanks Abdullah for that intro and I'm you know mercifully been given 18 minutes this time but the relief really doesn't go all the way because the expectation is still there to deliver something that's worthy of the TEDx name um, and so I'm going to do my best uh, A Tale of Two Palms is what I titled this TEDx Ajman Mind Shift. Mind Shift. What exactly is a mind shift? Uh, I guess there can be more than one answer to that question. But to me, it reminded me of this conversation that I had with a friend of mine. And we were sitting there talking about ideas and how come ideas don't necessarily result in action. We were kind of troubled by the number of people with amazing ideas who for some reason don't follow through. And the consensus was that it's actually not that simple. It's not idea, action. That's actually a very scary thought. If you imagine what it would be like to live in a world where every idea immediately goes straight to action, it could be a very, very nasty place to live in. And so what we came up with is it's probably at least a triple staged thing. So we go from idea to conviction to action. I'm not talking about the conviction with like, you know, handcuffs and prison bars. Uh, but basically what it is is once an idea enters our mind, that's kind of the testing field. That's where we poke and prod and stretch the idea. And we're actually testing two separate things. One thing we're doing is we're testing whether the idea itself is worthwhile. Can I adjust this idea? Can I change it here or there? Can I make it a little better? But we're also testing ourselves. All right, here's a good idea. Am I up to it? Do I feel up to this challenge? Now think back to Jalal's speech. What drove Jalal to act is not the idea. It's because he became so convinced that's the driving factor. Being totally 100% on board and ready to go. That is what drives you into action. And so if you look at this timeline, idea, conviction, action. For me, there it is. Somewhere there is the mind shift. Because it's a change in perspective. You might have been a skeptic and you're now a believer. So what I'm trying to do for the rest of this speech is to try to instigate... Uh, a mind shift in you. I'm trying to be the catalyst here. So I looked within our environment to try to find something to tap into to help me in this. And that's why I came up with the tale of two palms. Now the first palm, I remember when I was first told that they were going to build an island in the shape of a palm in Dubai. My reaction was, why? I mean, I didn't really know the details. Of course, now I'm talking about the Palm Jumeirah. And I had no idea. I thought it was like a small little, you know, theme park for like 50 to 100 people tops. And I didn't know that it stretched five kilometers into the ocean and an equal five kilometers wide. I had no idea that it would eventually be the, the home for 8,000 residential units. This place is not just a, a residential area. There's shopping, leisure, dining. And the single project on its own doubled the shoreline of the Emirate of Dubai. So these are all really impressive things. But for me, the most impressive thing is that it's real. You can get into your cars after TEDx Ajman. You can drive there. You can go there. It's existing. It's not someone's fantasy saying you know what, I'd really like to make a huge 5 by 5 kilometer island. It's there. It's achieved. And so when I look at that, that's kind of the idea, conviction, action kind of in place. It's, it's, a working, uh, it's a living example of it. And it talks about dreams and aspirations. This is not seeing someone do something and say, yeah, I'd like to do that. This is kind of leading the way, saying, let's do something that's never been done to a scale that's never been imagined before, uh, we'll do it. Let's do it. And so there, it's very forward thinking, and I find it very inspirational. The inspiration in it is that 
you really can achieve these dreams. And so, I want to move on to the next palm. And this one's amazing. I mean, you thought the palm Jumeirah is something. The next palm is of an entirely different scale. Absolutely mind-boggling. I present to you the date palm tree. This little thing is amazing. This doesn't know that it's a date palm tree yet. It has every single thing. I mean, I know it's a seed. I know that. I just couldn't find a pocket big enough to put a tree in it. So this will have to do for now. I'm not being sentimental when I say that the palm tree is a very special tree. It really is. I don't know whether you know this or not, but this tree has gender. There are male and female palm trees. And it's only the female trees that bear the fruits. The dates that we love are only uh, carried by the female trees. And the male trees are, are just there for pollination. And it's manually pollinated through a lot of experience and expertise. And the most stunning thing is that it takes five to ten very long years to go from this little thing to a fully grown palm tree, be properly pollinated, bear fruit, and back to enjoying it and left with another seed. And so the virtue, the value of this date palm tree is patience. And I want to stop here and talk about the dazzling metropolis that has kind of risen out of the sands in the UAE. And I just want to remind ourselves that this is not something that we're used to. It's something that's very new to us. This life of luxury, this life of abundance, it really is only you know, a decade or two old. What we've always had throughout the times is patience. Whether it's the falconer patiently training his falcon for the hunt, or whether it's the families of the pearl driver patiently waiting for his return, always praying for his safety and well-being, or indeed whether it's the person who sows these seeds and patiently tends to this wonderful, amazing palm tree, waiting for the results very, very patiently. So I want to pause the, the, the whole palm tree stories for a second. I want to shift gears a little bit and talk about achievements and accomplishments. Now, I'm not going to bore you to death with like a Oxford definition of what these two words mean. But if you think with me, you know, let's, let's try to put our own definition to it. Somewhere in that definition, I think you'll tend to agree with me, there has to be some difficulty. There has to be a challenge, right? So challenging is, has to be some part of, being, of having an achievement or an accomplishment. And almost by definition, it has to take time. I mean, you can't... Instantaneous achievement is really nothing impressive, right? It, it has to be something that you persevere through. You have to take time to get there. And so there's this element uh, of time. And... I'm telling you all this because I personally believe, this is the, the mind shift that I'm trying to instigate, is that there is a cost for our goals. We have to be able, we have to understand that we need to pay this cost in time. The bigger the goals are, well, guess what? We have to pay more of this time. I want to talk a little bit about my personal experience. I was, you know, in a very comfortable um, uh, working environment in a very good job when I decided that, you know, occupational suicide is the thing I'm going to do. I submitted my resignation and I said, nope, I'll do something totally different. And I set up on this huge goal. My goal is not to have different opinions on it. No, I wanted to have it set in stone that people in the Middle East of all age groups love to read in Arabic. And if you're familiar with this part of the world, you know that's not an easy task. It's a huge goal, and it's a huge cost. And I ask myself, when am I going to be able to tick that as done? A year? I'd love to, but probably not. Five, ten, twenty? 
I'm of the thinking that this kind of change takes generations. And yes, I did put an S at the end of that. So when you're talking about generations, you have to have that patience for it. And what I'm here to say is that it's absolutely 100% worth it. There are small signs of success, but that does not mean that you're done yet. I sometimes see certain things that make me feel that through my own personal efforts, oh wow, here's some person who, who came up to me and told me, I really like to read, and I read in Arabic. So it gives you this little buzz. It is a nice indication, but it's only an indication that you're going in the right way. To achieve a goal takes a lot of time. And as big as it is, you have to be more patient. And here's a warning. I'm telling you this because I find it very important to be on board with this kind of thinking. You have to give things the time that is required. Because what happens if you don't? What happens if you assume that, yes, you can have the fairly instantaneous achievement? Well, you might get results. But those results simply don't stick. You find them, you see them, you kind of savor them a little bit, but as soon as you turn your head away, they fade. They don't stay there. And the thing that's even more dangerous is that it could lead to a sense of defeat. I know that this place is buzzing with energy, enthusiasm, people who really want to do so much. I want to do this, I want to do that. And now imagine you couple that with an unrealistic expectation that you can get it all done in six months. And when it needs six years or even longer. So the danger of falling into that, oh my God, this will never work. That stuff is the bad contagious uh, element that we are trying to stay away from. And so back to the tale of two palms. They're, they're really different now, aren't they? They're speaking of different things. And, you know, it might be a fair question of which tale should we follow? Which one should be our inspiration? You know, do we go Palm Jumeirah or do we go the date palm tree? And I think the only wise answer to that is to really follow both. I think unless and until that we fully agree that we have to follow both ways, we cannot move forward. We're destined to fail if we ignore our past as we're going forward. We have to recenter ourselves and really ask ourselves, who are we as people? I mean, don't get me wrong, I want the booming metropolis. I, I don't see myself living anywhere else. But I think it's also very important to, to know who we are. And so, just putting it all together once more, of the Palm Jumeirah, you know, what can we extract from the Palm Jumeirah tale? Reach out for the big goals. Go ahead. Dream. You really can do anything. The only catch is it has to adhere to the laws of physics, because that's kind of difficult to, to ignore sometimes. And I strongly recommend you check with your local authorities to make sure that it's legal. From the date palm tree, what we learn is that we sow today and we reap tomorrow. And that there are no assurances that we will do the reaping. The reason we do the things we do should not be for some self-centered, oh, I want to feel good about this. It should be for a long-lasting change. And there's that folk tale of the old man who is seen planting these things and is ridiculed. Because the assumption is he's not going to be there long enough to taste the dates. And he says in his wisdom that they planted in the past for us, and we have to continue to do so for the future. So there you have it. Idea, conviction, action. Your mind shift. Thank you very much.